On this show, we've seen how big data and artificial intelligence can go hand in hand to track coronavirus outbreaks around the world. Well, Blue Dot is a tech company that leverages data, artificial intelligence and travel tracking to generate early warnings about infectious diseases. The man behind the company says working as a medic during the Toronto SARS outbreak in 2003 motivated him to look for solutions. Blue Dot says it spotted coronavirus in Wuhan last December and its algorithms predicted where the virus might go next, both regionally and by tracking flights to destinations around the world. It calculated which cities were most at risk. It's fascinating. Cameron Khan is the founder and CEO of Blue Dot. He's also a professor of medicine and public health at the University of Toronto and a practicing infectious disease physician. So great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for this. As I kind of made clear there, this has been a 17 year journey for you that led to several years ago you founding Blue Dot. Just describe your experience and what made you realize more needed to be done. Mm. Well, thanks for having me on the show. And yeah, the story really goes back 17 years. Uh, you may remember in 2003, we had the SARS outbreak. Uh, I was just beginning my career as a you know, practicing infectious disease physician and this virus nobody had ever seen or heard of before uh, showed up in our city, overwhelmed our hospitals, our public health system. Uh, you know, a number of frontline healthcare workers died in that outbreak. What was so clear is that disease has spread really quickly and that if we want to stay a step ahead, we're going to have to move even more quickly. So you recognize that it could be sort of a catastrophe, actually, trying to deal with this, even a microcosm, nothing like what we've seen today. But it led you to say, OK, we can tackle this better. Blue Dot, explain how that works. Yeah, well, well, briefly, you know, as, as you've highlighted, um, the recognition is that the world is changing quickly and we're, we have a lot of the raw ingredients we need to be able to tackle this type of threat. Uh, growing access to data, advanced analytics, digital technologies that can literally spread knowledge around the world faster than any outbreak. That was really the, the motivation and, and inspiration for Blue Dot. Um, we are a digital health company, a diverse group of, uh, you know, veterinarians, physicians, data scientists, engineers, software developers, designers. We're all working collectively to build what we call a digital global early warning system for infectious diseases. Just I want to talk about what you've done as well, but there was something very interesting that you just said there about how diverse your team is. Because when we ask questions about the origin of this virus, when we try and track the path around the world, how it's spreading, your diverse group of people that are working on this perhaps gives you a, an advantage at this moment as well. Hmm. One of the things I've really learned is that this is a very complex problem. You know, one mm. moment you're thinking about Zika virus and you have to think about the biology of mosquito and temperature and other factors. And then you're dealing with, you know, uh, Ebola, which is completely different. And then, of course, COVID-19 is completely different. You really need a diverse set of not only data, but you need a diverse set of skills and expertise and perspectives uh, to tackle this problem. And that's really what we've been building here at Blue Dot the last six and a half years is that diverse set of perspectives, uh, because this is not a, a simple problem to tackle. Absolutely. I want to take us back to Wuhan, but specifically when you were listening to the noises and analyzing the data from Wuhan, and then you looked at the travel patterns around and out of Wuhan, and you said, look, if this is perhaps a bigger problem than we realize, we have to be watching Bangkok. And when we saw a rise in cases in, in Bangkok, very early on in January, you recognized there was a far bigger problem, perhaps, than we were hearing from China. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our, by the way, our, our surveillance system, which is part of this early warning system, is looking at news of outbreaks around the world um, in 65 different languages. We're gathering all of this information, uh, using artificial intelligence to make sense of all this vast amounts of data. Um, and that's really where we picked up this early news of the outbreak in, in Wuhan. But we know that these kind of outbreaks don't stay still, that they have the potential to rapidly spread across continents. Um, and that's where we connect all of this data really in just seconds to all of the flight schedules around the world, mm. to the final destinations of, you know, millions to hundreds of millions of passengers moving across the planet. We use that to identify what some of the next cities would be 
um, that would be at greatest risk of having COVID-19 spread to. Identified 12 of the top 20. Uh, Bangkok, as you mentioned, was the very top of our list, and it was the first city that was uh, hit with COVID-19 after it spread out of Wuhan. We published that in the peer-reviewed scientific literature because we ultimately wanted to make sure that this type of information was, was available uh, to the scientific community and the public health community uh, back in early January. Yeah, it's just astonishing to me that people like you were recognizing these things so early on and the rest of us were to some degree still oblivious or not recognizing the potential damage that could be created. I want to compare and contrast New York's experience, which was quite dramatic, versus California. And I know you were working with uh, Governor Newsom and the California authorities. Just explain to me how you were advising them. Hmm. Well, we, you know, have built an early warning system and a platform that's managing outbreaks over their entire life cycle, from early detection to assessing how they might spread across continents, but also to be able to manage outbreaks at a local level when they, you know, when we're tackling them in our own backyard. Um, a lot of the work we did uh, with and continue to do with the state of California has been around understanding population movements using data, and I really want to underscore anonymous data on hundreds of millions of mobile devices and the locations of those devices to get a sense of how populations are moving. This is a critical piece of knowledge uh, that we need to, to understand in order to have effective public health interventions. Uh, Stay-at-home orders, are they working? Where are they working? Where are they not? Perhaps where are populations getting fatigued? Um, and these are the kinds of insights that are needed so that the public health sector can utilize its finite human resources in the most efficient and effective and coordinated manner possible. Yeah, we were just showing on the screen there New York and the blue dots and the infectious disease outbreaks, which is which is critical. Um, Cameron, how do we prevent this ever happening again? How do we connect the dots and make sure everyone's speaking, whether it's at the federal level, the nation state level, state level if you have an enormous country like the United States, but also frontline workers like healthcare workers. How do we prevent what we've seen ever happening again? Well, one of the key pieces that you've highlighted, and I think it's a really important point, is that, first of all, an insight is only useful if it's ultimately translated into an action. And if we're going to tackle these types of threats, we're going to really need to empower the whole of society. Um, you know, generally speaking, this type of information goes to the public health sector first, and then maybe it goes to the healthcare sector and businesses and the public much later. Uh, but we need to be doing this in a more contemporaneous way. Uh, these types of insights have to be reaching all of these various uh, audiences. And I say this as a practicing physician. Uh, sick patients don't go to the public health department. They come to the emergency department. Um, so we need to be empowering these groups and these individuals with insights so that they can protect themselves, but also so they can protect the rest of us. Yeah. The early warning system needs to be far more comprehensive. Cameron Khan, great to have you with us. Fantastic work with the, uh, with the company. Stay in touch, please, because um, we will continue to track the developments with your help, please. Founder and CEO there of Blue Thank Dot. Thank you. Thank you.